if money was a simple value for value exchange and nothing else, wouldn't that be simp simpler? Wouldn't that be less charged with emotions if it was just a value for value exchange? You want to make money, you want to make a lot of money. Here's the thing, create value. You want to create a lot of value, then multiply those values. That's what entrepreneurs do. We basically solve one problem and then we multiply the solution times 100 or 1,000. So we make a lot of money because we create a lot, a lot of value. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> like we, we don't have to go into more complex details about how to make money because that's pretty much it. Because there's not enough self-worth, people don't value themselves and they don't create value for others. Because if you want to radiate from the heart towards outside, it has to be full. That, or at least it has to be very high. And what most people do is that they're lacking self-worth or so they're trying to get it. So they're getting, they're, they're not giving away, they're taking away self-worth in order to get it inside. And they're like, I need, I need, I need, I, I like, I like, I lack, I lack, I like. And they're basically just taking out of the world and not respecting the give to receive. So you have to give. But in order to give, you have to accept the fact that you're worth it 100% because you exist. Once you're full inside, once you love yourself 100%, what are you going to do with the rest? You're going to give it away <laughs> all the time. And giving away your love and your, your value is basically just creating more into, the, into a, a null expanding world. So you're basically going with creation instead of going against creation. Greetings and good day. This is The Channeled Truth. I'm your host, Thomas Lyhart, and I'm a channeler myself, and I love exploring the works of Seth and Jane Roberts, Abraham Hicks, and Bashar. And with me today, we have a very special guest to help us wrap our minds and our hearts around this idea of abundance and prosperity. And many of us on the spiritual path are very much integrating the realm of commerce and business and exchange and finances and abundance and prosperity into our spiritual lives and the spiritual path. And so I'm super excited to bring on this guest because he's a friend of Jean-Francois from episode 18. And he's got these incredible insights to help us integrate these aspects of our lives. So let us bring Adrian onto the stage. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm very humbled to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation, Tom. I appreciate it. Yeah, so I understand that you want to just just get right into it. So uh, I'll let you introduce the topic and then we'll just roll from there. So take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And hi, everyone. My name is Adrian Bollison. I'm an entrepreneur a business coach, uh, personal coach, so some might say life coach, even though I don't like that, uh, I don't like that, that category, um, or I don't prefer that category. Um, I, I am in, I'm also a researcher in the field of uh, life creation. Like what are the mechanics that create the world? It's something that has been a passion of mine for the past, I would say 23 years. I've been doing per, uh, daily personal development every day for the past 23 years. It led me to explore a lot of topics uh, and it began with money because I was in a big lack of money uh, back in the days. And afterwards uh, I went into business and then I went into quantum mechanics and then I went into the spiritual world where I discovered Bashar, I discovered uh, the law of one, I've discovered the Seth material and, and so on, that led me to explore a little bit of science and the occult and mystic stuff, where I spent many, 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 many hours. And it actually came to a, a, an alpha to omega moment where I discovered that pretty much everything was connected. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all about the same things. It's just different perspectives of the, of the same things. 
and the mystic, the occult, the metaphysics and the physics and the science became pretty much one subject for me, which is mechanics of the experience. So that's that's my passion right now. And one of the topics that I wanted to bring to you guys uh, today was the topic of wealth and prosperity and abundance. Uh, more so um, detaching the idea that wealth and abundance is all about money, which is, it is, but it's not all of that. If there's a lot of other ways to make, uh, to make, to be abundant and a lot of other ways to be prosperous. Is that a good intro, Tom? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I'm super excited to bring this topic in because it's not something we've discussed yet so far. And this is episode 19 already. So, you know, it's about time we bring this aspect in because, you know, we, we, we deal with it. Every aspect of our lives is, is interconnected with this. So, yeah. Uh, do you want to jump into the five forms of abundance or do you have a, a starting off point? Well, I'm going to give a warning first. Uh, Eng English is not my native language. It's my third language. So I'll do my best to, uh, to uh, use the right words, the right uh, pronunciations and the right uh, verbs and, and stuff like that. I'll do my best. Uh, but if, if some words make no sense, it's totally normal. <laughs> so I'll do, I'm just going to say whatever, whatever flies through me. Uh, so let's go. Let's get into the, the five um, forms of abundance. First of all, I wanted to introduce the subject um, saying that basically what I want, what's my aim today with you guys is to, so you can gain some comprehensive understanding of the diverse forms of abundance that are beyond just the, the monetary wealth. I also want you to be able to recognize and appreciate the various ways which abundance can manifest in your lives. Also, I wanted to develop a flexible and open mind towards the receiving and integrating the different forms of abundance into our lives, empowering also the act of passion and understanding that, uh, that attracts the necessary resources and opportunities in various forms into our lives. And also to just to explore some strategies and, um, um, you know, how to overcome limiting beliefs and hinder uh, the recognition and acceptance of abundance. Does that make sense for you, Tom? Absolutely. Yes. And uh, unpacking and dissolving the negative beliefs is, is such a huge part of this path. And I feel like, you know, this really completes the puzzle picture when we, you know, work through the emotional realm, work through the spiritual realm, but then bring it down to the physical nuts and bolts of, you know, prosperity, abundance, and, you know, the tools of physical reality that we gather and use you know, to manifest, to, to express our mission. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, this is perfect. What do you say we, we define you and I, we defined what abundance is. I, I'm interested in, in having your perspective on what, what's your definition of abundance? Well, it's very much in alignment with, with Bashar speaks of with the five forms. And I believe that five forms is really kind of just to get our, get, get ourselves thinking in these terms. Because, you know, as we know, the five forms, you know, it's, you know, it's the money, it's the synchronicity, it's, it's the, uh, you know, the ability to trade with somebody, the ability to receive gifts, right? Uh, it's the ability to, you know, synchronicity, I think I mentioned the imagination, right? These are the five forms Bashar has gone over, but I, I believe there's more than that, but these are a great place to start. And for me, I, I have to say, like, it's been very true that Money's just been one piece of the puzzle, and I feel really uh, amazingly blessed and just just a lot of gratitude because I have the ability to do what I love to do and and you know what my passion is, you know, from teaching the Qigong classes to doing the healing work to you know not having to do uh, other pursuits that I'm not interested in or in order to quote unquote make money. Right. But I can just devote my full time to to passion, you know, to 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 doing the healing work, to doing the teaching work, to making these episodes, to doing channeling. Right. But money is still just one piece of that puzzle. And so for me, it's the synchronicities. Right. It's the the ability to trade. There's countless amounts of, you know, healing sessions, channeling sessions, uh, you know, esoteric uh, modalities 
modalities that I have received as a, a form of trade because I'm doing healing work for others and they return the favor, do it for me. And so I have just an amazing abundance of, of receiving guidance and support from others. And it's part of trading. It's part of receiving gifts. There's like, there's no money exchanged, right? And yet it just feels like I have this incredible wealth of, of support. Right. So it's, I, I very much agree. It's, it's that Bisharian way of looking at it. You know, I might add a couple extra categories in there, like friends. You know, that's a form of abundance, the ability to have many friends and the right people in your life. Right. That's that. It's, yeah. There's a richness to that. You know, I live in the Bay Area where there's a, not only a lot of activity on a social level. Right. Being in the heart of Silicon Valley, but also the natural beauty here is you know the fact that i can drive 35 minutes and be in the deep of a redwood forest that's a form of abundance i can just it is. go into nature and just be in these incredible redwood forests right that's a form of abundance right that people sometimes take for granted so you know i'm glad we're doing this episode because uh, it's so rich right how many forms yeah. we can appreciate in our lives I, I love the fact that you just mentioned rich because I had that in my mind. Uh, so it's a, it's a good synchro synchronistic moment. Um, some people think they're poor while they are rich just because they didn't define wealth and prosperity the same way we did. <laughs> Most people, what they do is that they, they, they say money is the, the, the form of wealth and prosperity. Once you start studying what prosperity means and you see that there, there are way other forms that you can actually implement into that definition, you actually become richer by the moment. Like the moment you change your definitions, you become richer. And becoming something is feeling the this, this something, it's not having the something. Some people might say, well, I have many, many friends, I have relationships, I got experiences, I travel, blah, blah, but I don't have any financial money. Like they say, I'm, I'm prosperous, but I don't have the money. Well, not having the money m makes you not prosperous enough. You can have the money as well. It's having all the forms of prosperity that makes you prosperous. I think that's my opinion. Why, why, not, having every, why not having all of them? Uh, as an example, you gave um, the, the monetary wealth. You have the trade. Like how, what's your capacity to trade uh, value for value? Uh, what are the gifts that you're giving and receiving? Uh, what are the synchronicities that you have in your life? Um, what is the, ima the imagination or the power of your imagination and inspiration that you put in or that you're taking from the world? Um, what are the, the other forms of, of abundance that you're integrating as like relationships or passion uh, into your life? All of those, oh, and also uh, super important, the beliefs that you carry. Like what, what are the, the, what's the wealth of the belief that you're carrying? Do you carry a lot of limiting beliefs that actually make your world seem like it's not rich or you carry not many limiting beliefs that give you uh, a perspective that is way bigger than most people where you see beauty in pretty much everything and you're getting way more, um, your, your, your perceptions are way more open into seeing how much the world is rich uh in everything all the time like there's opportunities everywhere when you when you look at them if you're open if you're in a opportunistic person in the uh, you know in the right way in the positive way you're going to see opportunities everywhere and for people like me who tend to you know take take the money aspect and just release it really quickly in my coachings like uh, it doesn't take me more than five minutes so Perhaps it might be a good idea just to start with that, and then we can go on the uh, on the other subjects and 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 dig down. Um, I really like to explode the money thing. Uh, I for me, money is unlimited, and it's a concept. It doesn't really exist. It does exist because we said it exists, and it's uh, it's it's more of a of a, an economic transaction uh, something that we accepted as a as a group that it's actually valid and it's more practical than trade but uh it's it's unlimited we print it we create it we we make it circulate 
it doesn't mean that it's circulating correctly. Uh, it's it's really it, it's not necessarily in equilibrium at the moment, but it's it's an unlimited resource. How do we create money? Basically, just creating value, value for someone, creating um, solutions. Um, creating pleasure, creating stuff that people want, that creates value. As soon as you create value, you can create money. And, and when I say you create money, you actually don't create anything. <laughs> you connect to the uh, the intention of people just to give you money for that for that value. So there's nothing to create. When people say, "Well, I want to make money," well, you want to create money, like you want to invent it. Is that what you want? They say, no, no, I just want to have it. I want to I want to have the money. It's like, why do you want to have the money? It's unlimited. It's, it's as if you're in the ocean, you want to have water. It's already there. You just have to take what you, what you need. So one of the, the first things that I, I'd like to, um, to propose is to change what the definition of money is. If money was a simple value for value exchange and nothing else, wouldn't that be simp simpler? Wouldn't that be less charged with emotions if it was just a value for value exchange? You want to make money? You want to make a lot of money? Here's the thing. Create value. You want to create a lot of value? Then multiply those values. That's what entrepreneurs do. We basically solve one problem and then we multiply the solution times 100 or 1,000. So we make a lot of money because we create a lot, a lot of value. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> like we, we don't have to go into more complex details about how to make money because that's pretty much it. And it can be positive and negative at the same time. I mean, I can solve positive problems in the world and I can create negative problems in the world as well. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to, uh, to share is it's the drug dealing approach. Like Pablo Escobar back in the 80s, he was the best drug dealer in the world. So he was creating negative uh, value into the world, but everybody was buying cocaine, right? <laughs> and everybody had a good time buying cocaine. So he he was basically creating like this hype of emotional positiveness with the product. And then people got hooked to it, which became negative, but everybody was buying it because that's what they wanted at that time. It's still there, by the way. But as you can see, it's not necessarily... Making money is neutral. It has, it, it can be negative. It can be positive. So I wanted just, just to make sure that people know that it's, it's the, the, the mechanics of making money is super easy. Once you get that, you don't have to, um, you don't have to scratch your head saying, well, it's hard to make money. No, it's not necessarily hard. You just have to solve problems. That's pretty much it. Is that, um, is that how you see it? You know, that totally makes sense. It's it's value. Uh, and it harkens back to something Bashar has talked about as well, is that fundamentally, as we raise our frequency and we shift to a higher dimensional awareness, you know, fourth density, that we're going to start recognizing more and more the value for value exchange. And that money will become secondary. It might even dissolve or transform into other forms, but we will very much understand the value of people and yeah, so I totally agree with that. It's it's creating value. And when you take it off of the money and start focusing on what do I have to offer? Well, here we are in the formula again, right? Act on your passion, right? And we know the rest. It's that whole idea of like, you have a gift. We have, we everyone has a gift. And it's it's your gift is the value that you will give to the world. But I love how you brought in this extra element of how entrepreneurs multiply that value right that is that's so perfect and now in our day and age with the internet things you know we have the capacity to multiply our value exponentially in ways oh, that yeah. like even just a couple generations before did not have that ability right just as an example this episode i'm recording in my living room which back in the day you used to need a recording studio and then you needed oh, yeah. like prime time television spot. Now it's just goes on YouTube. It goes this place, that place, you know, people in Brazil can watch it. People in, you know, Europe can watch it, uh, you know, wherever there's free access to the internet, right? So, so that multiplication is just, just consider the possibilities that we have now, but it comes back to that fundamental, you know, you must act on your passion to the best of your ability with no insistence on the outcome. 
you know, staying in a positive state and unlocking from those negative beliefs that you, you mentioned at the beginning of this episode, right? It's just, it's being on that path, right? And the more value you put out there, you'll be surprised at how quickly abundance will flow back in to reflect because we cannot own, it's like we cannot, we have to be the vibration of that which we want to experience. So when you're putting out value, well, guess what? You're going to experience value. It's going to come right back to you. All right. If you feel worthless, valueless, devalued, depreciated, right? A financial term, uh, then well, very much you're going to experience the reflections of that. So we have the power. You have the power. We all, you know, I have the power. Everyone has that power to connect to that value and just begin to radiate it out. So that's, yeah, that's, that, that's my take on it. It's a, a very good take. And also what we're doing right now is actually two forms of, of wealth, which is trading. We're trading time and ideas at the moment, you and I. We're recording it. We're going to share it with the world. So we're basically going to uh, take we might answer a couple of questions. We might unblock a couple of beliefs. We might unblock some ideas. We might give some ideas and stuff like that. That might create a lot of value and it's kind of leverage. And we never know which person takes our, our gifts of the exchange that we're having right now to create something awesome and to create a lot of value out of that. Well, if you and I, we created that, we created that space and that person takes our ideas and goes like, oh, okay, now I get it. I, I can be an entrepreneur and just multiply my value. And he, and he starts doing it and actually comes into this new world of, of abundance. Well, we created that. <laughs> it stems from us. It's a ripple well, We're not going to know this necessarily. And it's not something that we're necessarily interested in knowing it because we, we don't do it for that. But that might happen a lot. And that creates value. And it creates a ripple effect in the, into the world where you're giving value away. And the, uh, as Bashar said, you're going to receive what you're putting out. <laughs> so the more you're putting out, the more you're going to receive. And it's, it's really uh, the mechanics of the experience. So that, that is also wealth. Whatever we're creating right now, it's also wealthy. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's, it's you know, access to information, ideas, imagination, synchronicity, right? The people that stumbled into this episode perhaps feel inspired by it, start acting on a certain insight, start putting out more of that energy of passion and joy, creativity, love, and then that multiplies the value in the world, right? It's, it's like we're unlocking the value that we already have because you're valuable because you exist, right? That's yeah, the fundamental. Exactly. And it's as we act on our passion, we do the formula, we really... We, it's like we uncover that, you know, we, we discover that we are that. And the more we share that, then we inspire others. They discover that they are that too. And then there's all of a sudden we find ourselves living in this world surrounded by people because everyone influences, you know, it's like the ripples go out. And the more it's like there's, there's a point where it's just a critical mass and you just you shift with that group and that cohort into that fourth density vibration because everyone's reflecting more and more and more value. And it, it almost becomes like you can't, like the probability of dropping back into third density becomes so low because there's so much, everyone's reflecting it. And it's just, it's just bouncing off of everybody, like just brilliant crystals of light and all the facets are reflecting the light of everybody else. And it's just, it creates this incredible momentum, right? And that's the age we're living in, which is super exciting. There you go. Exactly. Have you have you ever noticed that people that lack money or lack abundance or lack prosperity oftentimes lack self-worth? Absolutely. A lot. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, it, it is very reflective. And I know myself when I've gone through my poor periods in life where it just seemed like, you know, there's there wasn't, you know, there's just lack, an abundance of lack, as Bashar would say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it was very much my negative beliefs getting in the way, feeling like I don't have value, being trained into feeling like, you know, what I have to offer doesn't have value. People aren't interested, right? It's just the circumstances I grew up in where I wasn't really encouraged to really find my truth and my calling 
because you know many on the spiritual path at least you know in the earlier generations there was this lone ranger effect where like it felt like you, you know nobody even understood what the hell you were trying to say right and you felt very alone and then negative beliefs you conclude you don't have value yada yada and it's it's shifted majorly in my life the more i express this and share it with the world the more just abundance just comes even from unexpected sources you know whether it's it's trade it's synchronicity sometimes it's just meeting the right person at the right time to open a door which money could never even buy you that even if you tried right it's just the timing of things the ideas that unfold so but yeah it comes back to you know self value and self love really I, i totally agree with that right it's always about that uh, it, it's funny because i'm coaching a cohort of about 12 entrepreneurs at the moment and when i was reading all the uh, the forms that i gave them about their lives and what were the, the limitations in their lives my my program is called unlimited entrepreneur so basically what i'm aiming for is what are the limits that you think that you have in your, in your life and when i read through all the the sections in the will of life it's always the self worth that comes out in pretty much every one of them it's there's not uh, not enough self worth and because there's not enough self worth people don't value themselves and they don't create value for others because if you want to radiate from the heart towards outside it has to be full at, or at least it has to be very high and what most people do is that they're lacking self worth so they're trying to get it so they're getting they're they're not giving away they're taking away self worth in order to get it inside and they're like i need i need i need i i like i like i lack i lack i like and they're basically just taking out of the world and not respecting the give to receive so you have to give but in order to give you have to accept the fact that you're worth it 100% because you exist if not you were you would not exist and that definition is the for me it changed it completely changed my mind completely changed my experience uh because it was one of this uh one of this unlimiting beliefs that killed a lot of limiting beliefs at the same time like it it really went like a bowling alley and just crashed everything um and it it does amazing stuff to people that believe it right away like just that belief that if you're there it's because you 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 had to be there uh the exp- the the creation deem it valuable for you to be there if you wouldn't be you wouldn't be there it's it's as easy as that now why would you take your value and lower it a- instead of having it a 100% or having it high or having it on or having it like i have it instead of not having it as an example it's just a it's just a decision it's not something that you need to do or need to have it's something that you decide to be just like being happy like i i don't need to consume i don't need to create i don't need to produce i don't need to have in order for me to feel the the fact that i am so that is is really it's so simple that it's actually right in front of us we don't see it because we don't define it that way and that's one of the that's one of the abundance of uh leveraging your imagination your imagination and, and and start to inspire people because uh once you're full inside once you love yourself 100% what are you going to do with the rest you're going to give it away <laughs> all the time and giving away your love and your your value is basically just creating more into the into a a null expanding world so you're basically going with creation instead of going against creation creation it's it's expanding right now it's not contracting so why would you contract while the the nature is expanding so whatever you're going to do to expand yourself you're going to be rewarded with more synchronicities more imagination more ideas more everything and i would like to say that it's harder than that but it's not <laughs> it's really so simple but it's a big decision that people need to make to value themselves 100% that of what they can imagine they can love themselves i love how you brought that in because that you know when i catch myself falling back into negative beliefs you know that's the hook is this idea that sneaks in there that like oh 
maybe you're not enough. Oh, maybe you need more students. Oh, well, maybe you need more money. Like, and then you, you get caught in this loop of like, oh, I'm not enough. I don't have enough value. Let me, let me look for the external symbols of value. Like, oh, what is it? Is it money? Is it more people, more students, more followers, more, more, you know, subscribers on YouTube, you know, whatever you choose to define that as, and then you start looking for it and then you find yourself lacking. And now you're trying to, like you said, take from the world, right? You want the world to show you value, right? But then you're already coming from a place of lack. And so what you put out is what you get back. And it's like, it's like putting the cart before the horse, right? Yeah, so every exactly. time yeah. I, I, it's like when I catch myself in one of those, it's like I start really feeling into it and it's like, okay, yeah, value, right? What about just value because I exist? It's like, yeah. oh, it's like, it's like you just kind of relax into that. Like, oh, it, it doesn't matter, right? The amounts don't matter, this don't matter. And it's like you're chasing the effect instead of just being the cause, right? It's like just be just resting in that value. And then all of a sudden, then you get the inspiration, right? You get the idea, you get the synchronicity that comes in. Oh, I have an idea, I wanna act on this. And then now you start radiating that value out and then you stop caring about the external symbols of, I need this symbol to validate my existence. Like, no, you're valid as you are, right? And, and that validation, you start radiating that value out and that then things start happening, right? But it's because you've let go of the the outcomes already, right? So it's it's so uh, when you see it, it's just like oh my god! It's like you're saying it is very simple, but yeah, it's the, a paradox. It's like the loops are designed <laughs> yeah. that when when you're in one of those negative loops, feedback loops, it's like you're yeah. you're so caught in that. It's like you build, It's like a trance. It's like a hypnotic, and it's yeah, a cultural it trance too, because there, yeah. there's so many people out there are also in these states, and as we're shifting through fourth density yeah. there's still a lot of that so as soon as you are that vibration that seems to be like that's all you see and then it's like it reinforces and then you're in the hall yeah. of mirrors and then it's just like okay i just shake myself awake here and just come back to that value i have yeah. value because i exist that's just a beautiful place to start i'm gonna give you a trick um i don't know if i, I don't know if you knew this but this is how i would like to express it with my my clients Whenever they're going into this negative loop, uh, because it, it's a mechanics, right? It, it works this way and it works that way. <laughs> so it works both ways and the same thing. It's actually the same thing. It's the same mechanics, just backwards. If you look in the mirror, you're going to see the exact opposite. Do you, do you agree with me? When you look at the mirror, you see the opposite. Right, you see image. that flipped image, right? Exactly. So if you're going in a negative loop, one of the tricks to get out of the negative loop is to have a reflection brought back to you. <laughs> so to to have someone else, a coach, a guide, whatever, somebody who cares about you, give you the exact opposite <laughs> of what's going on. So you can see yourself on someone else's perspective and take that other perspective of someone else to bring you back up of the negative. I've, I've done this so many times. And it works like a charm every every freaking time. Every freaking time you're going down, you just need a mirror. <laughs> and the absolute um, permission slip is actually looking to yourself in the mirror and saying, am I here? Do I exist? If I'm still here, I'm still valuable. And just give yourself some value so you can go back up again into that, that energy. And that is the ultimate permission slip. It's always going to be self-love. If you feel the way that you're contracting, you're going into the negatives, it's not a bad thing. It's just a thing. <laughs> it's not qualified as being bad. It's just qualifying as being negative. So in the in the world of duality that we're that we're living, we tend to associate the the negative with the bad and the positive with the with the good. But it doesn't work that way. The way it works is that we have duality and polarity. So in each side positive and negative we have polarity there's positive and negative in in all the sides feminine masculine have positive and negative as well so knowing that mechanics uh, allows you to bring back yourself from the dark all the time and sometimes you need help from the dark because the dark uh, tends to 
occult the light. <laughs> Whereas the light always gives you the permission to go into the dark like this. <laughs> you can always fall into the dark like super easily. Whereas the dark tends to occult the light. It tends to block it out and you think there is no hope, but there's always hope. There is as much value in the dark that there is value in the, in the light because the value is neutral. So it, it's, it's in everywhere. So if value is everywhere, that means wealth is everywhere as well, even in the dark side. So there's things to explore over there that are very valuable that you can bring back to you. And you have to go there from time to time just to see what it's all about. Like, how are you going to, how are you going to see how much you can love yourself if you didn't hate yourself for a while, or you didn't like yourself for a while, you have to go there in order to create that, uh, that elastic, uh, experience that Bashar tells, like, if you're pulling this way, well, you're going to go that way. That's, that's whatever you're giving. It's the same mechanics. You're actually giving in into the dark and you're going to get the same thing in the light. If you're giving in the light, you you can get access in the dark. It's the same thing. So one of the, the things that I, I like to mention to people about abundance is you can get abundance in negative as well. So there's abundance everywhere. And just the fact that you can actually feel the fact that there is abundance everywhere makes you abundant. Like that's the state of mind that you're going to that you're going to have. And because you're abundant, you don't fall into the dark side. You don't fall into the dark, like super low energies. You go up right away. That's the mechanics of, of the, the expansion. Does that make sense? The, yeah. the way you explain it? Yeah, it's like you touched on so many points. I don't even know where to begin, right? <laughs> but, you know, I love the rubber band analogy, right? If you find yourself falling into the dark, well, consider the momentum you're building up to, you know, when you finally release that negativity to fling into the light, right? that you know the the whole idea of the abundance of lack right it's like when you reframe it realizing that you, you you abundance is everywhere right but we can create that abundance of lack that can be a permission slip to start unlocking from that but i most of all what i love is how you brought in the idea of mechanics because i feel like mechanics is so important you know to take the value judgment off of what is naturally happening positive and negative you know one energy negative energy constrains and breaks down and compartmentalizes and fragments and the positive energy integrates and you know raises the frequency it's a uh, you know it moves you towards a state of oneness and integration right and the polarity is part of the experience there's no value judgment you're having a bad day a bad week a bad life right we we say even the word bad right as a is, is a value judgment you're having a negative experience right your value doesn't change right you know you're not a bad person you can't be a bad person because you exist and you have value but you can have a negative experience where you feel a lack it's like you feel an abundance of you know worthlessness right yeah, it's exactly. like it's it's just seeing it more as mechanics that you step into that neutral zone and you can observe these things as oh i'm caught in this mechanically negative energy and I can shift to a mechanically positive energy, right? And from that neutral zone, you can pivot pretty easily. But when you're caught in the definition of, oh, now I'm a bad person. Oh, and, and you, you buy into that. Now you, 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 the veils, you know, get a lot thicker and occluded, right? The light. And I love how you said, like, from the light, you know, the more you expand into the light, the more aware you are of the darkness because it's an integrative frequency and you can see more and it's, it's expansion, right? When you're in the darkness, you're contracting, 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 and you get caught in all these little cubby holes and caves of the dark to the point where it appears as if you cannot get back to the light, right? And that's the definition of the negative frequency, right? And so that's where the challenge comes in is, is when you're in those deep, dark caves, you know, find your value, find the permission slip that's gonna help you reconnect to that sense of value. And then the caverns disappear. It's like you just start realizing like it's all it's just an illusion, right? It's a it's it's a valuable illusion because like you said, the contrast, you know, when you've experienced the deep dark caverns of negativity, how much you know, how much faster you can fling into the light, how much you will appreciate the light, how much exalted experience you have of shifting from darkness to light, right? That's really what human life is all about is it's just going from darkness to light and experiencing the bliss of the actual shift, the contrast 
moving from darkness to light you don't get that in spirit because you're already of the light and you never forget who you are so you don't have the experience of the exalted remembrance of who you are and coming home right the journey right the hero's journey is you know homecoming as this whole new being this whole new awareness of yourself because you've gone through the the trials and the tribulations right so the that that joy of expansion that's why we are here so hopefully that will help somebody out there right when when you're going through those caverns of the darkness i agree and magic mushrooms as well <laughs> that helps a lot no, it that's helps a, a whole other episode yeah. right there <laughs> yeah there you go uh, but it helped I, I just wanted to mention it that as being one one another form of abundance that that we have substances that help us um come back to our real selves or uh, to uh, to hint us of who we really are as as a uh, energy and you know high lip high density beings that are having an experience of a lower level uh, experience which is the 3d 3d is actually very simple when you think about it it's really about duality and it's really about polarity and, and you you work with those forces uh but if you if you experience an, if you experience a session of unlimited love just for a while just for a couple of of minutes you will get a lot of things from you, you will get what value is all about you will get why it's so important to be in this lower uh, density so you can actually experience everything that is dense and and how rich the experience of density is like being super contracted and and the negative side and the dark side like that's that's a, an amazing experience when you live your life in pure bliss all the time like nobody it, it's like going into a spa you know when you go into a spa you go into the the hot water you're like oh my god this feels amazing but it feels amazing for a while and then you start adapting yourself to the amazing and it just becomes regular I mean, can you live in bliss like all the time and feel bliss all the time? You're going to, you, you want to change that. You want to, you know, shake it up a bit and, and go explore some, some other densities. Once you, once you're able to perceive those things that you are, uh, you know, unlimited love and, and bliss, you kind of accept the dark side as being a value. That's, that's what happened to me. And then I, I, you know, I kind of understood how the mechanics works and how the illusion of um, the illusion of dark presents itself and, and how you can use it actually to bounce back and just back and forth to uh, back and forth in, in that uh, in that illusion of uh, seeing yourself in the negative side, in the positive side, masculine side, yin, yang, blah, 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 stuff like that. And, th and that creates a lot of experiences like super super rich experiences and when i say rich experiences for me the word rich is really prosperous it's it's abundant there's abundance everywhere like i said it's just not this it's not money <laughs> it's just another thing and i would trade honestly i i put a lot of time energy uh attention focus on those experiences rather than money money is actually just so solving problems and, and and sharing whatever my passion is which is the mechanics of the world so people can can understand what the mechanics is and uh, just live more authentically with their preference like what what do you prefer like what do you want to do in life for real if if you if you didn't have to convince everyone to love you and you would love yourself what would you do like how authentic would you be and stuff like that and people become really authentic really quickly once they get that yeah <clears throat> thank you for that and you know that's the paradox of balancing the light and the dark is the more you're neutral to both and see the value in both then the dark doesn't hook you so much because you're not pushing against it you're not trying to avoid it you're not afraid of it you're not you know living your life trying to like keep it out you know you experience you know negativity comes up within and you can embrace it and you can get to the negative belief that's generating that sense of contraction and darkness and now it's like a level of mastery where you know I, I feel like avoidance comes up a lot in spiritual practices 
and people will just you know very subtly start avoiding things and they start yeah. wanting to spiritually bypass certain experiences to hop over and yeah. th for me that's 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 the way to fall back into that darkness right because you're oh, yeah. what you push against you become <laughs> you become entangled with it right so oh, yeah so it's avoidance creates pain absolutely <laughs> all the time <laughs> And then the pain magnifies because it wants to get your attention, right? Well, if you get yeah. it when you stub your toe and you look and you say, oh, I'm out of balance, you know, that's different than you have to fall into the ditch because you, you, you didn't listen when you stubbed your toe, right? It's, it's, it creates pain. Yeah, you're right. Um, so I feel like we've covered a lot of ground and yet we barely scratched the surface. Oh, yeah. So I feel like there's got to be more episodes here because uh, there's more aspects of this to unpack. And but for now, I feel like we've we've given our viewers and, you know, we, we've given it an, an earful and a good chunk to metabolize. So let's go with this. And is there places you want, uh, you know, if people want to reach out and find you, are there places that people can go? Most of my content is in French. So if you speak French, you might enjoy the content that I'm putting out. Um, I might do more in English in the in the next following years, I would say, because I'm, I'm in it for a couple of years. Um, that's my passion right now. So for the moment, I would say that uh, you can you can just Google my name and see whatever you find out. And the more time is going to pass, the more content there's going to be there. But I have no attachment if people go check me out or not <laughs> awesome well yeah here you are just sharing it reminds me of the parable of the sower you're just throwing throwing those valuable seeds out there and may they land where they where they will right with yeah no good. attachment on the outcome that's perfect so thank you so much for being here i definitely want to do this again you know maybe we could even do an episode with you know jean francois you and myself as oh that'd be amazing threesome, right just bouncing ideas yeah. so so yeah, let's keep the conversation going. And to our viewers out there, thank you so much for being here, being part of this journey for exploring consciousness. And if you feel inspired to do so, go ahead and you know give the video a like, share it with your friends and uh, drop us some comments. That really helps the algorithm a lot. So this message can reverberate and vibrate out into, you know, further out into the universe. So. Thank you so much for being here and may this inspire you to be that point of attraction, to be that point of vibration where you're putting out what you want to get back, finding your value and knowing that you are valuable because you exist. And that's the end of the story, right? So rest in that value, know your value and may this inspire you to be your truest, most natural self. And we will sign off and see you in the next episode.